everybody, JT News Reborn here, and welcome into Kong Week. With the release of Kong Skull Island this month, I thought that I would go ahead and uh, review all the King Kong movies that I haven't already reviewed. With the exception of King Kong vs. Godzilla, which I reviewed in my 30 Days of Godzilla Marathon. So if you want to, you can go ahead and check that video out. Now, with that being said, let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into the 1933 classic itself, King Kong. Ah! The original King Kong was released in the year 1933 and was directed by Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Schudstack, or I don't know how to pronounce his name, it's right there if you want to take a look at it. Anyways, it also stars Faye Ray as Ann Darrow, Bruce Cabot as Jack Driscoll, and Robert Armstrong as Carl Denham. The movie is fantastic. It truly is remarkable. When I watch this movie nowadays, I go and I look at it, and I stop for a minute, and I go, wow. How in the hell were they able to make a film like this all the way back in 1933? And what I mean by that is all the new and creative film techniques that they had to invent in order to see their vision come to life. The way that they seamlessly blend the actors, the stop motion effects, while also utilizing life-size puppets is truly, truly remarkable. Oh, and I guess before we continue onward, I want to warn you all that I will be spoiling this movie. You know, for those of you who haven't seen or heard of what happens in King Kong, I mean, it is one of the most well-known movies of all time so continue at your own risk the plot of this movie is centered around a filmmaker by the name of carl denham who must quickly find an actress to fill a role in his movie that he is going to be shooting on the mysterious skull island from there he comes across the down on her luck and darrow who carl denham convinces into joining his movie and to going out on this voyage across the ocean granted she just met this guy and doesn't really know what she's getting into but with carl denham explaining it you go along with it, because he is just one of those characters that you just want to follow. He can probably convince you to do anything if he wanted to, and you'll go along with it, even if it sounds completely insane. But that's just the type of character that he is. You want to be around this guy and see what he does next, hence why he is my favorite character in the movie. After Denim convinces Anne to go on the ship, once they arrive, Anne meets the character of Jack Driscoll, whom they fall in love. Now, if there is one aspect to this movie that I consider kind of weak, it's the romantic aspect to it. It isn't exactly terrible, but it isn't that great either. Some of the dialogue isn't very good, and they even managed to poke fun of it a bit in the Peter Jackson version. Once the characters reach the island, Anne gets captured and is then sacrificed to Kong. Kong's first appearance here is pretty well done, the stop motion work is rather impressive, and it really gives King Kong a distinct personality. I can only imagine how long this all must have taken to get Kong to perform all the different movements, because with stop motion and animation, you have to go frame by frame, and that just takes forever. After Anne gets taken, the crew of the ship tries to rescue her, and we get to see a lot of the cool stop-motion work, with all the dinosaurs and Kong fighting, with my favorite being the scene where Kong fights the T-Rex. After things start to go a little chaotic, Denim begins to realize that, you know what, my movie's kind of in the shitter, but you know what, let's salvage this trip, let's bring something back. So you know what they do? They capture Kong, and they bring him all the way back to New York. As you all know, I'm sure, it doesn't turn out so well for Denim and the rest of the crew, as King Kong escapes... No, not that one, but we'll get to that soon. Anyways, in the big climactic scene, Kong climbs to the top of the Empire State Building with Anne Darrow in his hand, where he is gunned down by the airplanes and falls to a death. It wasn't the airplanes, it was beauty killed the beast, recites Denim as the movie ends. So that was the original King Kong, and it's easy to see why this movie is beloved by so many people, even to this day. There's a lot to love in this movie. For one thing, you have Kong, who's just an icon of film. Every time that he's on screen, he's amazing. The charisma of the cast, particularly from Carl Denham, is very good. I love its technical achievements, and the musical score is also very good. So if you get the chance, do yourself a favor and give it a watch. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this review today. I hope you all enjoyed watching this, and be sure to come back tomorrow as we take a look at the sequel, Son of Kong. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care now. Bye-bye then.